Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to be taking and doing a little bit of an overview of my power hammer. Now, here in a moment I'm going to give you a little bit of a walk around tour of my power hammer. Uh, there's really not a whole big secret of what I've done here, but I am going to take and show you as much as I can and post it here to YouTube so this way you guys can see as much of this build as you can. I will not be asking, I will not be answering a million and a half questions of what size is this part and what is that and you know how fast does it run and all these other questions that come out with this sort of thing. Uh, I have created plans for this and power hammer plans for this at a cost to me and so therefore it's a cost to you as well. Uh, if you choose to undertake a project like this. Now this here hammer cost me right around $1,200 to build. Now that, well, a little more than that, probably about $1,500 to take and build at first with all the scrap steel that was in it. And the reason why it cost that much is there was a lot of trial and error when I built this thing uh, to get to the point where I'm at now. So uh, it's not for the light of heart. It's definitely a project for somebody who has good fabrication skills under their belt. There's a lot of parts that are going to be taking a lot of high stress and strain, and so therefore you need to be good at welding and you need to be fairly competent at fabrication, you know, cutting things square and put, you know, welding stuff together, being able to stitch things together. Um, if you feel that you're comfortable in that, then this project here can be good for you, as with any sort of power hammer build. Uh, be aware of your own abilities and assess your own risks. So, uh, the basic design of this power hammer is essentially a throwback to Bradley held hammers. Now Bradley made a lot of different hammers. They made strap hammers, beam hammers, they made all sorts of different held type hammers. And then they moved on to, you know, the overhead cam and some of the other type of uh, hammers there. And all sorts of different weird little hammers that you've been able to see out there uh, that have been built um, essentially off this design. Now, I've been commenting on before that this design is not special at all, and it's not original, it's not unique. And it is just a variation, or it's just a copy of, if I can recite the troll's line correctly, it's just a copy of the Appalachian Power Hammer. Uh, this it is not. It has nothing to do. It doesn't use the same flywheel. It doesn't use all the same components. This is completely from scratch. So it has nothing to do with the Appalachian Power Hammer. If you want to build that type of Power Hammer, I suggest you start. I think you can find even free plans for that available. Uh, so that may be somewhere that you want to start and go take a look at that. Uh, now what's the key components and the differences? This is a compact design. The Appalachian Power Hammer has a spring that goes over, it rocks right about here, and then it has a toggle and it goes down to a motor on the back side with all your flywheel and things back there. Now where that has an advantage here, as with this design, this here is a little bit in the way if you wanted to orient your dies and run a piece of stock, say, this direction. Um, so the way that I have built the plans for this is for this to essentially be set up the same way, so you're getting exactly the same hammer. Now this hammer is my daily driver, so I use it almost every day. It's pretty much used for any of my heavy drawing out or forging operations. You guys have seen me make, you know, like punches or drifts or, or hammers that I need to take and draw out the peens on or things like that. This does an absolute fantastic job on any stock up to an inch and a quarter and that is high carbon uh, tool steel or 1045 or 1095 if you will. That's the hardest material I have worked on here is 1095 and about an inch and a quarter in diameter. Um, now that was round the 1095 at an inch and a quarter. Uh, 1045 square it'll work that fine just fine under these power hammer dies. Now that is its maximum range that you're probably going to be able to take and get out of it. Uh, if you need something bigger, you just scale up everything uh, that I have here. Now I am going to be making another power hammer for my shop in the future and it's going to have a ram weight of it in excess of 200 pounds 
and it's going to be very similar to this design, just a whole lot of different upgrades in the future. Uh, so be sure to check out the video on that. And I will also offer power hammer plans for that. I'll have it all drawn up, put in a system to where you can have the different pieces and parts uh, made and or fabricated for you if you don't have the time um, and you have more money. So we're going to get into the walk around uh, demonstration here. As you can see, this is a fairly small hammer. It's not too deep. You know, it's just from there to there. So three feet deep tops and you know, it's well, whatever wide it's less, it's less than two feet wide. So it doesn't take up a lot of space in the shop to be a hell hammer and to take and hit so hard. The Ram here is a 35 pound Ram and then Everything else adds on to it and makes it roughly right about sitting weight, about 37 to 38 pounds. I forget what, how heavy that was uh, once I had all this welded up. It's been a long time since I built it. Um, so uh, let me bring you in a little bit closer and show you what else we've got going on here and kind of give you just this little bit of a walk around of everything uh, from the motor, the foot treadle, the light switch, the counterbalance, pulley, yada, 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 yada. I'll shut up now and bring you in for a closer look. Okay, now that I've brought you in a lot closer, let's hopefully this camera won't have any problems with focusing and stuff. This up here is just a two pin setup and I call that the traveler. That's what allows the spring to roll back and forth through it as it as it traverses up and down. It allows that spring to roll in and out and that allows everything to roll and function smoothly. This spring here, it has seen a gamut of issues here in the last, oh, I don't know, 300 to maybe 400 hours of runtime that this thing has had. Uh, about every 150 to 200 hours of runtime, which uh, if you're not sure how much runtime that is, that is a lot of hammering for a power hammer. These springs do break. So here in an effort to be cheap and not have to just go out to my scrap pile and grab another spring real quick, I have just welded this back up. And, you know, occasionally it breaks somewhere else and I weld it back up. And that's how that works. Now, some may say, well, you know, that's going to be, you know, it would be better to just have a better spring or the system is faulty. And it's, once again, after about 200 hours of runtime, I get a break. Or if I push it to an absolute critical limit, which is why I had those problems right there. But now you know about it. So if you push your hammers too hard, something will break. Or you command them to do something they really weren't meant to do. Uh, back there, it's just a simple pivot pin. This piece here is just a big tube. So is this right here. Now, this is something that's changed on the plans. This pass-through right here is not going to be so. It's actually just going to have two, two separate pipes, one on the right and one on the left side of the hammer. And so that way you don't have to worry about cutting out this pipe here. That was one of my mistakes that I made when I built this hammer, but you know, there you have it. Now you know. This here, just a simple tractor top link with a pin through it. It goes all the way down to the actual cam assembly itself. Now I'm going to try to take and get you in here fairly close. The camera's pretty good at focusing right now, looks like. That's there, got a couple shaft collars sandwiching a cam, a solid steel cam. If you want to know how that's constructed, you can always go look at my beam hammer videos. Uh, I did a complete beam hammer build video and showed how that's done. This is the same exact bearing. Now, this here, just a simple clevis that I made. Couldn't find any factory that I liked that I could trust that were cast iron. So I went ahead and did something there different. This here, holy, is self-made. It's out of a large diameter steel well pipe, I think it is, or well casing pipe. Bought it at my local scrapyard. They were nice enough to take and cut me off a sliver, like you see here. And uh, yeah, it makes a very nice slip belt uh, pulley. 
The only thing I had to do myself, I had to buy that piece of one inch by three inch stock there and weld it in the center of it. And you say, well, Roy, how do you get all that center and make sure it's not all wonky and, and flopping around and whatnot? Uh, that's actually fairly easy. If you just make sure that the shaft is going through the center of the bar and it's equal distances to both sides, the thing slips right in, welds right up, and everything's centered up. If you get it a little off to one side or the other, then it'll obviously have a bit of a shake to it, a bit of a wobble, but it's gonna do that anyhow with the hammer running. So that goes down to my motor and my brake. So there's my brake. It's just a very simple uh, tractor supply mat bolted to some angle iron. And let me move you around. I'm trying to move you nice and slow there, ladies and gents, so it doesn't get thing. Those are two little height adjustment screws, bolts. The motor, you've all seen an electric motor, but that's hooked up to my foot treadle. Spring return, that's the foot treadle. So you should just be able to press that. It releases the brake and it tightens the belt, which then allows the hammer to run. Pretty simple in operation. Uh, the dies themselves, they're made out of 1045, hardened in oil, and then welded on. Uh, I did not temper these dies as I took them straight from the oil hardening process and before they were completely cool and chilled, I took and welded them to the ram, the upper ram and the lower ram. And uh, that was uh, that was the best way. And after, oh, I don't know, this would probably be close to maybe 600 hours of use. They're almost in pristine condition. So very tough. I would not suggest a really high, uh, high carbon steel for these or something that has a prone to chipping if you get it too hard as that can create a dangerous thing. So err on the side of caution and go with a little softer dies. That would be my suggestion. Simple light switch on that side. I'm not gonna take you around there. I don't have enough room for this little boom that I'm holding it on. Once again, it's bolted to the floor on a rubber stall mat. The rubber stall mat is the same thing I used for the brake. It's just a big, bigger piece of it. Actually, well, it's cut off all the same sheet. And then it's anchored through the floor with three and a half inch concrete bolts. Half inch diameter, three and a half inch long uh, concrete bolts. Now, there is not a separate pad for this, so it really does shake the shop when it's running. That may be something that you wanna think about if you're gonna build one of these. You're definitely gonna to wanna to take and have to cut out a separate pad or put in some expansion joint material around the pad and uh, create a nice vibration block, if you will. Uh, what else? Down here, I got pillow block bearings that sit on the cam. And if you look right there, that's a solid piece of one inch by three inch material that runs kind of a full length there to kind of give this thing some more support. Now that's gonna change in the plans to just two sides, not a center square tube like this that had to be cut out. It's actually gonna have two side supports that come out and those will be bolted to that. Uh, there's a lot of different things that'll be changing in this design that I found to make better. I'm gonna to try to come around here. Hold on one second. Sorry for, once again, any jitters or shakes or anything, just part of it. So this right here, see if I can get you in here. This right here is a counterbalance. So that means when the ram is in the uh, upward stroke, that is in the downward position. When the ram is in the downward stroke, that is in the upwards position, or supposed to be. It's kind of spun around there. I gotta retighten that bolt there but that's how that's done. So let me move you out here. Sorry, we're gonna go on a little ride. Lots of bumpiness. Ah! All right, you're surviving it. I hope. I probably made a few people hurl in this video. But uh, yeah, so there's the general overview of my power hammer. It's very hard to get in real close to show everything and its brother, but that's what I made detailed plans for. So back here, this is just a simple treadle connection. 
It actually has multi holes so I can adjust the height of this treadle if need be. I found that this height here works perfectly for me and so that's what I left it at. On the plans it'll have some adjustment there too so you can adjust it to whatever height works best for you. All right, well there's a little overview. Let me flip you around and give you some final thoughts. Okay, so there you have it. Um, as you can see, uh, it's a fairly simple uh, machine. It is quite complex with all the parts and the pieces. That's why I created the plans. I'd be talking until I'm blue in the face, explaining out every last ounce of this, um, you know, and once again, they're very good plans. If you're interested in building this hammer, the plans could help you out a lot. Uh, if you're uh, not interested, there's, you know, not interested in buying the plans, that's fine. You can watch this video 5,000 times. It all helps me out. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody who's bought my other Power Hammer plans in the past. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, I hope that you guys are uh, building some really great power hammers out there and are enjoying them every day and uh, adding to your skills and your knowledge. So anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give it that big thumbs up and uh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm sure you already were going to and uh, I greatly appreciate any feedback that you want to take and give and you know as long as it's good stuff, you know of course all, only good stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's all I gotta say about it. So, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You can find the plans for this power hammer at blacksmithpdfs.com. So, hopefully you all like this video. And like I always say, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.